All right, guys, today I'm gonna to be reviewing Jay Balvin's Japanese-inspired house. Along the way, I'm gonna be looking at things like the interior or exterior overall concept, things like interior design, details that were used. I'm gonna be looking at lighting, um, basically pointing out what I think works and what I think doesn't work. And that way we can learn from the architecture, learn to appreciate it, and also have techniques in our back pocket when we step up to the plate to design things like this, if we ever have the opportunity to. So let's check it out. This corridor right here is extremely beautiful. Um, and there's a few reasons why. The first one is because it's not a corridor that leads at a wall or some painting or something like that. It actually leads to a window, which is a direct visual connection to the outside. And the outside just happens to be extremely beautiful. Um, also, the fact that if you look around, there's nothing like baseboards, right? Uh, baseboards are kind of a cheap way to hide a bunch of imper imperfections. And of course, we have that natural light well at the top, which allows natural light to come into the space. So whether it's nighttime or daytime, this is an extremely beautiful corridor. I also like the small detail where uh, the architect brought the vegetation into the space. And that way you don't have the frame of the exterior landscape. You also have a little bit of that inside the house at the end of the corridor. So uh, this is beautiful uh, so far. So by the looks of it, that one corridor that we were just looking at leads into his master bedroom or what I assume to be his master bedroom. And it, there's no door apparently that, that stops that. So you have just one connection, one continuous flow that leads from the entrance of the house straight into the bat into the bedroom whether you like that or not you know that's completely personal i think it's really nice because jay balvin talks about how this is a temple it's a space for meditation it's a space where he can get away from all the hustle and bustle of life so creating a concept of having a continuous flow of circulation without the stops of doors or things like that and there might be a pocket door hidden somewhere that uh, can be used for privacy but again, that's not the point of this design, apparently. He does mention that even though this is his main bedroom or his, his bedroom, he doesn't care about that. He sleeps pretty much anywhere around the house. And this house definitely it makes it easy for you to do that because it doesn't feel like there's actual program. It just, be, it just feels like one giant space. Um, also, I, I really love the fact that the architects decided to leave the structure exposed. That's that black band that you see around the room uh, in not only this room, but in a few other rooms, you, you see that. And that those are actually the beams that are exposed and they match the frames of the windows below. So that palette, it's the black, the wood, it's very natural, right? The green, it's all these colors are very natural to the space. And it really adds to that aspect of meditation. Now it's really hard to spot any light fixtures in this house and uh, you could see some of them at his bedside which are uh, some sort of lamp hanging fixtures but uh, there seems to be one that runs right down uh, like below the ridge of the roof and it's just completely minimalist and I love the fact that there's the focus is on the actual space inside and outside it's not about the details that make up the space except for the structure of course but I think that adds beauty to it. Now, the, the bathroom, I mean, it, this is a phenomenal design of a bathroom. You know, it continues that palette. You have the black, the exposed concrete, the wood. It, it feels almost like everything is just a small part of this ecosystem. Like this bathroom is an ecosystem. Think of nature, for example, the ecosystem where you have different trees, different types of plants, different flowers growing all together and they're together in harmony. That's what this feels like. It doesn't feel like it's a, a bathroom, you know, like a Home Depot bathroom. It feels like everything is meant to be where it's at. And also take a look at these doors. This this is pretty wild to me, but there's no um, track at the bottom of this sliding door. If you take a look at any sliding door that you ever have encountered before, especially exterior, there's always a track. The fact that this doesn't have a track is pretty mind blowing to me. Um, of course it is a bathroom, so if water comes in or out of the space, it's it's not the end of the world. Like it, it's a bathroom, it's supposed to handle humidity. Imagine if it's like raining outside and it's, it's let's say it's completely dark outside, it's nighttime and it's pouring and you just open that up and you just jump in that tub. I, I think it's an incredible experience. Something that's interesting here, this brings me to one of the first things that I noticed that I don't like, but if you take a look at these, of these wood uh, veneer panels, 
they don't look good. They look like cheaply made, cheaply put together. So the only suggestion that I would have done or given in this space is the, the way they would have matched the the pattern of the veneer when they cut it. Something like a book pattern is, is basically where you grab a veneer and it's a mirror of each other, right? So like the right side and the left panel, they're a mirror of each other. And you just do that pattern throughout the corridor. And what that does is that it gives continuity to this corridor. I would have definitely put a lot of effort in the elevations or in the sections of this corridor to specify a book match pattern on these veneers. Tr incredible views to the outside. We got the pool views, but the pool is just adding to the landscape. It's like it's an infinity, so you don't see any border around it. So it's almost it almost feels like a lake. And then you can open up the doors completely so that you interior becomes exterior. Remember, it's all about that fluidity of space, right? You're you're combining all spaces into one. So it becomes like a uh, one fluid movement. There's not stop and start and do this here and do that there. No, no, everything can be done everywhere. Everything that you need to do. Of course, they hide the refrigerator, um, you know, things like this we don't wanna be seeing. But again, this brings me to my next thing, right? We're doing a good job at hiding uh, mundane details away and, and tucking them away nicely so that we really only see the architecture and the environment. But then we see this range here. I, I don't understand why didn't they go with a more concealed um, stovetop? I, I don't, it's possible that that was client requested, but you know, I just think it completely takes away from the space or it could have been separated together, like not part of the island, but it could have been made its own separate items so that it just like the bathroom where it was like another element that was part of the space this doesn't feel like it's an element part of the space this feels like it's just something that was thrown in there and uh just a minor detail here the way that that kitchen faucet and sink are placed i think it makes it in incredibly uncomfortable to wash not that i think jay balvin is wa washing anything it's not a nice design the design of the house suffers a little bit on the exterior. It's a little plain in my opinion. Not saying that it didn't have to be like, I'm not saying they had to put an effort into making it look better on the outside. I just think it's plain. I think it's kind of boring in any elevation from what I've seen so far. The only thing that kind of saves it is the actual choice of the exterior cladding, which is that charred wood, which is again, a, ch a Japanese, uh, traditional way of, uh, of protecting wood. I forget what it's called and I wouldn't even try to pronounce that. Um, but it's, it's basically you light wood on fire and, um, that, but not all wood, it's like a specific type of wood and that charring actually protects the wood. So I don't know if that's what they did here, but, uh, they went above and beyond using that detail on the exterior of the house. So that definitely gives it some points and I, I think it makes it extremely beautiful. Overall, I mean, it's an incredible design. I think it's extremely beautiful. I think they did a great job. They really captured the essence of what they were trying to portray, which is the harmony and the meditation and the calmness. And they really did a good way of connecting it to the environment and not make it so flashy, right? So it feels like it belongs there and it doesn't really feel like it just came to take over the surrounding space. It really highlights the space where it's at. So overall, I think the design is great. A few minor things that I would have probably addressed differently, but um, overall, I think it's amazing. And if I was to rate this one out of 10, I'd probably give it, I don't know, eight, and a, eight and a half or nine. Why do I deduct those points? I think it's because really the things that I said, I, I wouldn't give it a 10 because it's not like, oh my God, I think there's a few things that were missing. I feel like they could have made it a bit more exciting while staying within their concept, if if that makes sense. Um, but definitely it's way better than what we saw yesterday with Flea's house. So I, I like this much, much better.